G'day, I'm Dan from Bird Dog. Today I'll be walking through the P200 camera, how you first turn it on, how you access it on the network using NDI, and ultimately how you can get the best pictures out of it. So let's take a look. Once you've unboxed your P200 camera, if you look at the back of it, there's a bunch of different connectors. The ones that are important are obviously power and networking. Since we're using NDI for our network, we definitely need to have that connected. With power, we've got a couple of choices. We can use PoE, or power over ethernet, or we can use a DC power adapter if your network can't support PoE. So on the back of the P200, you'll see the DC connector on the left-hand side and the NDI video slash PoE connector. Let's plug it in. So in this case, I'm using DC power and then the ethernet connector is purely for the NDI. So plug in the ethernet first and then plug in your power connector. When the P200 first turns on, you'll notice it turns around to the left and then goes back to the center. Once it's finished doing that, the camera is initialized and you're able to access it. A good clue that your camera is ready to go is you'll see the green light on the front that blinks amber occasionally. So now let's get into the fun stuff, configuring your network. So in your computer network, you've got a choice of using automatic configuration or manual, and the P200 can accommodate both straight out of the box. If your network has a DHCP server, which automatically gives you an IP address, then you're good to go straight away. If your network is a manual configuration or you're trying to plug your camera directly into your computer, you'll need to do a few extra steps, which is to set your computer up as a manual IP address. Computer networking can be confusing, and what I've just said there about DHCP and automatic configuration may not make some sense to you. We have a great user group that can help you out. There's also some resources online that we'll point to in the link below. In this case, we're working on a direct connection from the camera to the computer, so we'll need to set up the manual IP address. When the camera turns on, if it can't find a DHCP server, then it will default to 192.168.100.100. So we'll need to set up our computer to be on that same subnet. So I mentioned before that the camera boots up and is on 192.168.100.100 by default. So what we need to do here is make sure our camera and computer can talk on the same network. In this case, I've chosen 123 as the last number, and this keeps it on the same channel. Those first three sets of numbers need to be the same in order for your camera and the computer to talk to each other. Once I've changed this setting, press OK, OK, and close. That's gonna get your network configured onto the same subnet as the P200. Now, if you haven't done this already, you'll need to download the NDI tools. This is available from www.ndi.tv. Once you have NDI tools installed, you'll need to open up your studio monitor. This is available if from the Start menu under NDI and Studio Monitor. Studio Monitor is a simple application to allow you to view any NDI source on your network. If I right click on Studio Monitor, you'll see a list of NDI sources. A quick tip here is your camera has a serial number on the bottom of it, and those last five digits will match the NDI name that comes up here. So if I right click and choose the camera with the correct serial number, you will then be able to connect to that directly. At this point, you'll see a picture from the camera, but it's set in full automatic mode. What we now want to do is go to the web interface and start adjusting that to make the shot look how we want it to. To adjust your camera, simply go down to the cog at the bottom of your studio monitor and press it. This will bring up the user interface or the web dashboard for P200. The default password for P200 is bird dog, all lowercase. So type in your password and you'll be greeted with the dashboard. There's some important details here to make sure your camera is working correctly. Most of those are on the right hand side. Under NDI connection information, make sure that there's a video signal that's the right format that you want to use, and status being active. The fundamental setting you'll need for any production is to set the video frame rate to be matching any other camera or any other source on your network. To do this, go to the AV settings and NDI AV setup. In here, you'll be greeted with most of the settings you need to get your video configuration correct. The third line down is where you can choose the video format and this displays all of the formats that the P200 is capable of working with. My production is working in 1080p 25. By selecting this format, the camera will reset, so it takes around about 30 seconds to come back up as a live source. At this point, it's probably good to walk through some of these other AV settings to make sure they're set up exactly as you want it for your production. So let's go from the top. The first option here is about bitrate management. Because NDI works on your computer network, we want to make sure that we don't send too much traffic over that that will cause issues. But we also want to keep the quality high, so we want to make sure there's enough bandwidth. In a typical environment, you would leave this as NDI managed, and that will set the P200 to work with a bitrate that is standard for all NDI sources. It's around about 120 to 140 megabits, depending on which format you work with. 
You can override the bitrate management by pressing manual and choose whatever format you like. Please be careful when adjusting bandwidth because compatibility may be reduced depending on what the capabilities of your NDI receiver are. As we work further down this list, we get to really fine tune our configuration. NDI supports grouping, which allows you to hide that NDI source from other viewers that don't belong in that group. By turning on enable, you can choose to have a specific group that your P200 belongs with. In this case, I'll leave it disabled and make it available for all public sources. NDI audio selection allows you to choose whether you have a microphone plugged into the back of your camera, if that's available as a separate NDI channel for audio communications, or whether you want to embed that into your primary NDI channel as a microphone. We then have the adjustment for analog audio in and out gain, and this allows you to fine tune your microphone, but also the output if you're working with audio comms. The BirdDog P200 supports tally information. This is an automatic configuration, which means when your P200 camera goes live on air, it'll have a red light up the top. You can turn this feature on or off, depending on whether you want the camera to be more discreet or more obvious. The final setting under the AV setup is the NDI failover source. NDI has a built-in failover capability, so if this camera gets unplugged or for some reason disappears off the network, it will tell the receiver to automatically connect to a different source. And you can choose that here, just by dropping down the list of available NDI sources. So that completes the AV setup. What we'll do now is move across to the network setup to make sure your P200 can work on your broader network. To get to the network configurations, just go to the top ribbon on the web browser and choose network. In this configuration, I have the camera set up as static, but you can also use DHCP like I was mentioning before. And this really depends on your corporate or personal network as to what setting you need to go to. Typically, DHCP works for most people as long as you have internet access and a router on your network. Much in the same way that we set up the network configuration on our computer, we can set that up for the P200 as well. So DHCP is our typical configuration. Going into static, you can choose the particular IP address you want to assign to this camera if you'd like. You'll notice when I go into DHCP mode, there's actually a timeout setting here. And this is where we can set up a failover, which is what we used at the very start when we turned on the camera. By adjusting the DHCP timeout, this means that if your camera is turned on but can't find the DHCP server, it will fail over to something else. This can be really handy if you use your camera in various network environments. For example, in your office network, the camera is set to DHCP, it will automatically come up. But then on the weekends, you do productions where you don't have that DHCP network. So you can set up a failover, so whenever this camera is used externally, it will always go to a known IP address. The last thing on the network tab is the bird dog name. This is really important to get right, because this names your camera for all NDI receivers. By changing this to, for example, camera one or camera three, that will mean that when you're looking for the camera on an NDI receiver, such as a TriCaster, a vMix or a studio monitor, it will come up with that name. Important to get this right. There are some restrictions in naming your camera. It needs to be all lowercase and only alphanumeric characters. So I'll change the name now to camera one and press apply. When you change the name of a camera, you do need to reboot it for it to reinitialize on the network. So go back to your dashboard and you'll see reboot device. You'll see now the bird dog name is called camera one. And if I open up studio monitor, you'll see now camera one is now that source. This completes the basic setup of a P200. You should now have that available on your network and the basic settings for your production setup. In the description below, you'll see a link to an advanced video where we start to talk about exposure and color settings to get the image tuned in to exactly how you'd like. Thanks for watching and please visit www.bird-dog.tv for more information.